Hello, it's Blue Orange 22. First of all, I get emails. People tell me that I should comb my hair because it looks really messy in videos. I swear it's the camera that does it. If for some reason, whatever it is, that whenever I go on my webcam, my hair looks messier than it actually looks. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. But as you see the title of this video, today I'm gonna talk about why I'm not a feminist and why I'm a men's rights activist and MRA instead of a feminist. And I'm gonna talk about my early days experiencing feminism and MRAs. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to list all the examples of the toxic feminists and the misandristic feminists that I would cite as reasons why I am against feminism today. And the reason why, and you know, if you're a men's rights activist or if you follow this channel, you know some of these names. Clementine Ford, Charlotte Proudman, Donna Hilton, Sarah Jong, the National Organization for Women. If you've watched this channel before, or if you go into my channel and you search up feminists or feminism, then you'll see I make videos explaining why I have a problem with feminist organizations. Because feminist organizations routinely protest laws that would give equality for male victims of domestic violence or male victims of rape. And feminist groups routinely advocate for laws that discriminate against men. But I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, and I'll tell you why. Because people can always respond, well, you're just looking at the extreme feminists, or you're just looking at these you know, political groups, and you know, those are people who are you know, not real feminists, and not like regular feminists that you, know, you would see on the street, which I don't even know what that's supposed to mean, because wouldn't like, the feminist groups that have the most influence over policy and over, like, social media presence and public opinion, wouldn't that be real feminism? Like, what is it then if not real feminism? But fine. I'm gonna instead talk about the early days. Why I became, as the title of this video is about, not why I'm a men's rights activist now, why I became a men's rights activist in the first place, okay? And if you watched my video a few days ago, I kind of touched on it. But in high school, so when I was around 15 or so years old, I think circumcision was like the first thing that I remember reading about and thinking like, wait, what? Like, why did that happen to me? How come we're doing that? And I don't remember exactly where the rabbit hole went down from there, uh, looking at different men's issues and boys' issues and learning about all like the MRA quote-unquote talking points, as feminists like to call them, but all the different men's issues and all the different examples of discrimination against men and boys, you know, all around the world, from conscription to pension ages, yada, yada, yada. And I had kind of, you know, noticed growing up, you know, you notice little things, you know, teachers being nicer to girls, you know, small things like ladies first, which I think is more damaging than, than people think about to instill that sense in children, because you're already instilling gender roles in children without them really being old enough to understand even why. But when I started looking up all these men's issues and all of the arguments that MRAs were making, of course I encountered feminism too. And I, and I talked to feminists online too. And at this point I was nothing. I was neither a feminist nor a men's rights activist. Yeah, I said I noticed a couple differences about you know teachers being nicer to girls, but it wasn't a huge difference. It wasn't a major problem. It really wasn't on my radar. And for the most part, I really just didn't care. Uh, I was a Democrat because I didn't really like Bush and I didn't really like the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, which I still don't agree with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And that's about as far as my politics really kind of went. You know, I was more into music and science and video games and being a kid. You know, I wasn't really thinking about any of this kind of stuff. But when I started reading about this, naturally, I got into conversations online. You know, places like Facebook, Yahoo Answers, you know, MySpace, whatever it was. You know, I would, I would talk to feminists and I would talk to men's rights activists and only online. Like my high school was completely unpolitical, which I think was just normal back in like the late 2000s, early 2010s when I was in high school. Like kids were just normal. Like you teenagers today, it's not normal. Like it was not normal when we were your age to be obsessed with politics. We just lived our lives. It was great. You know, it was much more chill. I gotta be honest with you. Now it's just, it's just you know, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's you know what? Maybe it's a good thing that teenagers are involved in politics. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying it was different. It was very different when I was that age. 
So in school, you talk about men's rights or feminism and you would just get a blank stare. So this was exclusively me talking to mostly adults on the internet and just looking up different things and, and, and looking up different laws. And, you know, it wasn't all that serious and I didn't really get super really into it, you know, right away. I said before that by the time I was, by the time I reached my 18th birthday, I was calling myself an MRA, but I wasn't really a full-time MRA until probably around the age of 21. So between like, let's say 15 and 21, it was this kind of natural progression into being a men's rights activist rather than a feminist. Now, this is an extremely long answer as to get to why. So far, I haven't even really talked about that. The reason is the reason why I am not a feminist is very simple. Talking to feminists. Talking to feminists is why I'm not a feminist. It's talking to feminists and asking them questions and hearing their answers is why I'm not a feminist. It's going to the Ask Feminist subreddit and asking questions about male issues like circumcision, male victims of domestic violence, conscription, pension ages, the education gap, etc. Talking to feminism about men's issues is why I am not a feminist. Feminists drove me away. When I would talk to MRAs, I would have such better conversations. I would have conversations that were rational, that were fair-minded, and most importantly, didn't try and mitigate women's issues. MRAs didn't try and say that misogyny wasn't real. And they didn't even say that feminism shouldn't exist. And this is still a major difference between MRAs and feminists, at least for me, because I know not all MRAs agree. And I know some of you, and you know who you are, are going to disagree with me in the comments, and that's fine. But I am not against the idea of a feminist movement existing. I'm not against the idea of a women's rights movement existing. I am against what the feminist movement has become. I am against what the feminist movement actually does. I'm not against the idea of recognizing that there should be a women's movement. And that was a very opposite attitude that I got in feminists. Because it's not just that feminists said, well, we understand that men's issues exist, but we just disagree with how MRAs approach it. Feminists, most of that I talked to, even you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and today, say that there should be no men's movement at all. The men's rights movement shouldn't even exist. And some feminists go so far as to say the men's rights movement doesn't even deserve the space for debate as to whether it should exist in the first place. So not only do they say that the men's rights movement has no place to exist, but even the conversation on whether or not the men's rights movement should exist shouldn't even take place. We shouldn't even talk about it. So it was my experience talking to MRAs and talking to feminists when I was coming in as a neutral. And okay, fine, I'm a male, and I had experience, you know, very, very light, very, very minor misandry as, 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 a, as a boy growing up. Not as much as I'd realized. Now I know about the education gap, and now I know just how deep misandry is. So I didn't realize how much I was experiencing. But it's okay, I may have come in with a little bit of a bias, but for the most part, I was an open book. And I'd never heard of the men's rights movement. And feminism was something I like barely knew anything and I really didn't care like, at all about. So that's how I became a men's rights activist. And that is why I am not a feminist. So a lot of people think that uh, young men get drawn into the men's rights movement because they're angry with women or because they couldn't get girlfriends in high school or because they had a bad breakup or a bad divorce or they secretly hate women or they're secretly white male supremacists. In reality, the reason why most men and women become MRAs is because they read about male issues and then when they start talking to MRAs and talking to feminists, they have a vastly better experience talking to MRAs and much worse conversations when they talk to feminists. So that's the right. And it really is that simple. You want to know why am I not a feminist? Feminists. <laughs>